When things become like mass appeal for the rest of society, and I'm going to blame this on my Aquarian energy, I feel like then what's the next thing? Okay, so like now we've all agreed that this is what we're doing. Now what are we doing next? Being a stylist and helping women, I see it constantly. The way we talk to ourselves, the way we talk about ourselves, like our words in general have become so important and something that I think about all the time. If you come to... What's up, Style Nation? Welcome to the first episode of Styled for Life in 2024, the podcast where female entrepreneurs like you come to refresh their style, boost their brand, boost their mood, and boost their revenue. Who's ready for a big year? So excited that the last two episodes actually fell on real holidays. So the podcast drops every Monday. So, and it has been for four years. Can you believe that? It's been four years. So it was just really cool to me that like we had the Christmas episode, we have the New Year's episode. How fun is that? So since today is the first officially when this podcast drops and the energy feels super juicy, I wanted to start the whole episode with a thank you very much. I'm so grateful for you. I'm so grateful for this community. I'm so grateful for every single person who's been on the ride with me. New, old, all of it. I am beside myself. So the video podcast is a thing for 2024. So the end of last year, we started doing video podcasting for the Style for Life. So you can still listen to it on Apple, Spotify, Google, but it will also be on YouTube going forward. I'm really excited about that because it lets me have props. So I'm going to talk about this book in a few minutes. Last episode, I got to show my measuring tape and my dress. Like how exciting was that? Um, so I'm really excited for this. It's just a deeper way to connect. So that being said, it was simply just a reminder of what's new. So this is the New Year's episode. So you know it's going to be a styled mindset episode because we're going to set the stage for what this year is going to bring and all of the things. And that being said, I want to get the disclaimer that I'm actually not a huge fan of New Year's. I love New Year's Eve party sign me up. That's something that's a really big deal in my family. It's a really big deal when we were little. It's always been something really big. I love the idea of starting new, starting fresh, clean slate, always learning, always growing, being the best version of yourself. I mean, hell, being better than you were just 10 minutes ago, right? Oh my God, I got something in my eye. Okay, I think I fixed it. I love it. I love that energy of it, but there's a dark side to New Year's energy, and it's one that I struggle with a lot. Hence why this book <laughs> is all over this episode and has made such a big impact on my life. So as someone who historically has placed their worth in their productivity, raise your hands, we're all my overachievers, which now I know is perfectionism in a different way. New Year's can be triggering for people like that because we always are on the go. We are always productive. We don't need a holiday to amplify that, right? The last thing I need is a holiday to tell me to be more productive, correct? Like when I'm always working for this idea of balance, which is another episode, I think it's a little bit of bullshit, right? I think we go through seasons and at certain seasons we focus on different different things. That being said, this isn't about that, but I just wanted to highlight for those of you that feel maybe a little triggered on New Year's with all the New Year's energy. And some of it, it's like really hard to not buy into. I get it. And and I do think it's fun to set New Year's goals and, you know, to have a plan for 2024. Like I said, I love a clean ending. I love a clean new beginning. I think as humans, we're always looking for that. I think that's a universal feeling that we all share. But at the same time, for most of us in the States here, it's January It's dead winter. Your motivation isn't going to be through the roof. So it's really hard to go against Mother Nature and to be the most big, bright, beautiful version of yourself 
when Mother Nature isn't. You're literally fighting against nature. And I don't know about you, but how successful has that been for you? So if you are someone who ties their worth or their mood or their emotions to how productive they are and you feel like you struggle with in January, I just want to say, I see you. I hear you. And that's not what today's episode is about. You're welcome. So of course, I have a theme for January. I actually have a theme for almost every single month going forward for the rest of the year. I talked about this a little bit on last week's episode when I was talking about how I have all of 2024 mapped out inside the Style Squad because I'm so excited that everything that's been happening with this community and I just feel so confident and I just know how to make everything better than it was last year. And I just see where we need more structure and where we don't and all of that. And so I'm super excited for this year. So that being said, I do have a word of the year and I do want to share it because last year, my very first episode in 2023 was me sharing my word of the year, which last year, my word of the year was quantum. I don't usually do words of the year that was new for me last year. Like I said, I've always been a little anti and you may or may not know this about me too. Um, And it's going to sound really contradictory and you're probably going to laugh, but I've always been someone that wants to go against the trends. Now I know for a living and follow trends next week, we're going to do a trend, top trends prediction for 2024. But when things become like mass appeal for the rest of society, and I'm going to blame this on my Aquarian energy, I feel like then once some things become mass, then what's the next thing? Okay, so like now we've all agreed that this is what we're doing. Now what are we doing next? Gift and a curse gift and a curse. But I have been leaning into the ideas of words because as a business owner, nothing has been more intriguing to me than paying attention to my language. Doing a lot of writing these days. How about you? But the way we talk, the way we talk about ourselves and being a stylist and helping women, I see it constantly. The way we talk to ourselves, the way we talk about ourselves, like our words in general have become so important and something that I think about all the time. If you come to one of my workshops or master classes or you join the squad and you come take one of the master classes, I always, not always, because I've done it enough times, I always break down the true meaning of the word confidence because also what happens is we start to use words all the time without remembering what they really, really mean. And I think it's important to reel it back in and remember what the true meaning of certain words are, especially when they hit mass production. That's not the word I'm looking for, mass appeal. And then we start to flippantly use them because they're overused. And then I always like to bring it back in because at the end of the day, what I am giving most people is confidence. I think that's what every coach, I think that's what every accountability person, I think that's what every strategist, I think that's what every VA, I think that's what anytime we partner with anybody, every collaboration is a sense of confidence because two heads are better than one. But what does that actually mean? So my word of the year is methodical. God, how fucking sexy is that, right? <laughs> Not very sexy at all. I know. I know. I was like, what? But one thing that's been happening to me since 2019 is I just get these hits, these knowings, these gut feelings. And it's like, this is what we're going to do. And I was working right here in the office, right over there at the desk. And it just hit me. And I was like, methodical. And I was like, "Mm, I don't even know what that means. And like, when I think of method, I literally think of like the target brand of body wash, right? Like, I'm like, well, what does that even mean? But I've heard myself say over and over in my business that I've worked on my craft and I'm building my craft for the last three years. I've worked on building really good systems to be able to provide virtual styling and make it super impactful since it's not in real life. Like, how can I go above and beyond to make it really impactful virtually? How can I build this community? How can I do these things? And now it's time to get really methodical about what that means and where the value of all of this is being placed and where all of this is going. So methodical is my word of the year. And what does that mean to me? That just means that I'm paying attention to detail and that I'm being deliberate, which is essentially the same thing as intentional. And I love the word intentional, but it's it's hitting mass appeal and it's becoming a little overused and methodical feels new to me. It feels like a new habit. It feels like a new way of thinking. I have big feelings all the time and I live in them a lot. And 
I've been doing different things to manage that in the back end and I want to be more methodical. So how about you? What's your word of the year? Make sure you DM me and tell me because I'm super interested to see how everyone approaches. Like what's your personal New Year's resolutions? How do you do this? All right. So what are we going to talk about today? I want to just like talk a little bit about just style mindset. I just want to like lay the groundwork for this year. I want to drop some reminders. Speaking of New Year's energy and why I think it can be a little triggering for everyone and why all the jokes around like, oh, then come mid-February, the gym parking lot's empty and all of that, right? Is because success is repetitive. And I don't know where I read that. I I read a lot of books and I should have wrote it down. But success is repetitive, and that's something I've really been leaning into, right? Success doesn't come overnight. I don't think healing, I don't think getting better, I don't think confidence, I don't think courage, I don't think any of that comes overnight. I think when we have lightning bolt moments, when something hits us, I think it's a compilation of all the little baby steps that we've been taking that led to that moment. It can feel like a really big lightning bolt moment. I swear just two weeks ago, like I up-leveled, just like I got this whole new level of confidence. But it wasn't anything particular that happened that day. It was just for the last three years, I've been peeling back the layers of my identity. Actually, let's, (laughs) no, I've been rebuilding my identity because it was burned to the ground, right? It was stripped to the ground in August of 2020. So I've been rebuilding it day by day. And then a eventually we get there. Now, for me, it took about three years. In that one area, maybe it won't take another three years. Maybe for you, I mean, it's all different, right? It could be three years, it could be six months. But the one thing I want to remind you guys is that success is repetitive. Success happens in the things that we do every day that are sustainable. This is why James Clear Atomic Habits is like a bestseller over and over and over every single year. Because the success of our lives happens in the daily actions that we take. It happens in those everyday, simple, simple choices that we make. So for January, my theme inside the Style Squad is just that. It's sustainable style systems. So yes, I'm going to be talking about those same things here on the podcast this month as we dive in. And that's what we are going to be focusing on inside the Style Squad. So when this episode drops, it will be the first. And then that Thursday, we are doing our kickoff call for January. So if you haven't joined the Style Squad and you want to join, I'm inviting you right now to come join us because I'm going to tell you about the super cool activity that we're going to do to set the stage for those sustainable style systems. And before I tell you, last episode, I gave you guys a code to join the Style Squad But I was just so excited. I forgot to tell you that it expires. And I was going to expire on the 31st at midnight. But since I forgot to tell you, I wanted to come back in today's episode and tell you that I'm going to extend the code until the 3rd in case you want to join us for this call on the 4th and for the month of January, obviously. But if you want to get in tame, so that code squad 10 is in the show notes from last week, is in the show notes from this week, whether you're on YouTube, Apple, Spotify, the show notes should all match all across the board and you can join us and you can come meet a new community of entrepreneurs and you can work on your style mantra for the year. So we are going to do really cool call. It's our monthly mixer where we get together. I usually have a guest speaker lead us. So this month we're focusing on systems, sustainable systems, not just style, but also your nervous system. So we're going to spend a few minutes doing some nervous system reset work before we create our style mantras for the year. And this isn't your typical mantra nervous system session because my number one value in business is to bring the fun. So we're going to do this mad lib style. Yes. Any opportunity I have to gamify my business and the learning and the master classes and the activities in the style squad, sign me up. Which is really funny because everyone in my house are huge gamers, but when they game, I don't typically game with them. I usually take that time to decompress, read, take a bath, etc. But it's so funny to me how I infuse that into the Style Squad. So we are going to do Style Mantras Mad Lib Style to set the stage for 2024. And then the week after that, we are going to create our sustainable winter capsules. I'm going to share a couple different methods to build out capsule wardrobes. And we're going to focus on winter just because it's January. And I want you to feel amazing to get you through the month 
that feels like a year that is January to get you to March when the spring comes. So, so much juicy stuff is happening this month and so much more. I'll keep you guys up to date here on the podcast. So, I held up my book. And also, it's funny because I was like, I want to bring this book on the podcast because now it's video. I can share things. And I was looking at the cover and I was like, this is literally my brand colors. <laughs> when I got the book, I had no idea. But I have in my brand, you know, this like off white, black, the pink, and the orange. Like, those are literally my brand colors. I thought that was so funny. If you're not watching the book and you're like, Okay, great. Thanks for describing the thing on the video. It's The Perfectionist Guide to Losing Control. It's a book that was actually mentioned to me in a Style Squad call in the beginning of the year. I had one of my dear friends, Shazia Aman, came on. She's been on the podcast before, The Life Engineer. And she gave us a masterclass in our wealth archetypes and our embodied abundant feminine energy. And before we, I think it was before or after, I can't remember, she was like, hey, I'm reading this book. You guys should read this book, The Perfectionist Guide to Losing Control. And I was like, I don't identify as a perfectionist. Being the amazing coach that she is, she had this little gleam in her eye and this little smile. I was like, okay. <laughs> little did I know that I'm very much a perfectionist and that this book was such a big eye opener. In the book, they break down five different types of perfectionists. And if you are someone who has just an innate drive to do amazing things, if you have an innate drive to overachieve or are high-functioning, overachieving, whatever the word is, that high-impact, whatever the word is that you use to describe yourself, you have a little perfectionist in you. Like I said, there's five different types. And you should read this book because it's going to change your life. I have been devouring this book because there's so many big insights. There's so many things. There's so many, she touches on so many facets of our life. She talks about style. She talks about interactions. She talks about hobbies. She talks about sleep. She talks about relationships. She talks a lot about guilt and pleasure, which is something that comes up a lot, especially when you talk about style, is everyone feels like it's a guilty pleasure. Everyone feels like, and I've talked to my friends about this so many times, they're like, you need to talk more about how women can use style in their business. She said, because we will pay for anything for our business. Like, we'll invest in our photo shoot, we'll invest in our branding, $10,000 for our website, you know, 20, I don't know about 20, but, you know, $10,000 for a copywriter, $5,000 for a photo shoot, $3,000 for a photo shoot. Like, you can get this stuff all different prices, right? But when it comes to our clothes, we're like, ah! No, it's such an indulgence, right? But it's not because we think of it as a personal expense when it can be a business expense too. And I just think that that's really funny. So she talks about all that kind of in here around pleasure, around allowing ourselves pleasure, about how the perfectionist, and like I said, I identify as someone who puts a lot of the sense of their self-worth and their productivity. This has really helped me see, I've been on this journey for a long time, but this has really helped me see myself in different ways of like how we will wait until we deserve something to let ourselves shop, right? We have to wait till we've worked so hard, till we've thrived, till we strived to allow ourselves to do certain things. And I see that in a ton of my clients when it comes to getting dressed, right? Like I haven't worked hard enough it could be in anything. It could be on my body. It could be on my eating. Those are two obvious ones when it comes to getting dressed, but it's way deeper than that. It's way deeper than that. Anyways, highly recommend if any of that was, um, I'm going to drop the book now one last time, The Perfectionist Guide to Losing Control. If anything I've said today has resonated with you on that, it's a must read in 2024 if you haven't already read it. I've like totally shared it to all of my friends, all my business besties, clients, etc. So, of course, like with every book I read, it inspires something in me for my business. And I was taking a bath one day after reading this book. I love to do my self-development reading in the bathtub. And I just kind of had this, <sighs> so funny, my husband talks about the sliding scale all the time. And I do like the reference of the sliding scale because we don't exist as much as we want to. We don't exist on one side or the other. Nothing in life is that black and white. And we all slide up and down the scale. Some days you're at the top of the scale. 
scale. Some days you're at the bottom of the scale. And being a cyclical woman, if you are cycling, you know what I mean. Sometimes your high is life. Sometimes you're like, all I need is a nap and a couple snacks, right? Like it is what it is. So I was thinking, and I was like, when it comes to our style, especially over the last couple of years with COVID and all of these things, there's a couple of stories and there's a couple of things that come up and there's a couple of We'll call them style characters. So just like she broke down the perfectionist and said there's five different perfectionists, I was like, ooh, I think I'm starting to see three style characters emerge from this work. And I try to come up with fake funny names because I'm not a psychologist and I don't know all the labels, but I do know some that run through my life and that run through some of my friends, clients, etc., So the three style characters, and I kind of see them as a spectrum. So I see where this is the low end of the spectrum. This is the high end of the spectrum, right? And we can start here and we can work our way up. And like like I said, we can slide back and forth. These two, I think we'd constantly slide back and forth in, but we're going to start right here. And this is the martyr. Jay, I don't, like I said, I try to come up with um, funny words for this, but the martyr, which I think a lot of us can identify as, but from now on, we're going to call this the house gremlin. (laughs) <laughs> this is the style of character that we put on when we tell ourselves that we don't have time to get dressed and how we look doesn't matter and that no one cares about how we look as long as we're taking care of our kids and as long as we're working really hard and like I'm so busy don't mind my messy bun and I don't feel confident because like I have no time to get dressed that style of character the house groom one this is the furthest we can away that we can get from embodied when it comes to our style This is you not allowing yourself pleasure. Adorning your physical body is pleasurable. It is something that people have done for centuries and centuries and centuries. I don't care if your idea of embodiment is a tinted face lotion and lip gloss. Every time you tell yourself no, you're not, you don't have enough time to just do that basic self-care thing for yourself. You're playing the martyr every single time. Sometimes you don't want to get dressed. I totally get it. Hence, let me give you an example that you might relate to. Pandemic hits. We were all like, oh, thank fucking God. I never have to get dressed again. I'm going to work in my pajamas every single day. That was great for a couple of weeks, right? But then you're like, oh, this sucks. It's just like every time I sit down in front of a cheesecake, I'm like, oh my God, I can't wait. I'm going to eat this cheesecake. Yeah, a piece of cheesecake is fucking amazing, but I can't eat the whole cheesecake. I'm going to feel like shit. The same goes for living in our pajamas every single day, right? But no one was telling us or forcing us to show up a certain way, and we're going to get to that because that's going to be style character number two. So we began to play the murder, and I guarantee that if you're telling yourself you don't have no time, no one cares about what you look like, blah, 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 that martyr energy, that house gremlin energy is showing up in so many different other areas of your life where you feel stuck. Now, I don't think it's showing up in every area of your life because I do think there's some areas of our life where we just excel. Like if I could take the knowledge that I can apply to style and apply it to food, (laughs) I'd be doing a lot better in that area, right? So I get it. Some areas it comes easier than other, but I can use that area of my life to see If I feel stuck somewhere else, how am I making similar choices as I am in this one area where I'm stuck? So style character number one on our sliding scale. And I'm just using this to set the stage for 2024 as you start to lean into who are you? What do you want to be? What is refreshing your style for you? What does self-worth mean to you? What does confidence mean to you? What version of you is this is like we're setting the stage. We're just exploring all the things, right? So style character number one, the martyr of the house gremlin is the, I don't have time, no one cares about me, it's not about me. It's always about you. Because you are about you, right? Like, never forget, it's always about you, because you are a creator, you have so much power. Style character number two. This is where things get hairy, and it's one of my favorite. This is the pretender. Like I said, I just made these up. These aren't real names. I'm not going to say, like, the perfectionist, you know, all of those kinds of things. I'm not labeling anybody. This is the pretender. This is the, I'm using my appearance to compensate for my lack of self-trust. This is where I feel like our physical appearance and money have very bad reputations. You know, like money is a root of all evil. If you care about what you look like, you're vain. 
right? I very specifically didn't use the word vain or vanity or vanity monster in this. I used pretender because I don't believe that if you care about your physical appearance that you're vain. Because let's be real, we all like to look good. We all like to look at our reflection and say that we look good. And if you say that you don't, I well, one, I don't know why you're listening to this podcast. So I'm going to go on the limb and say I'm safe and not offending you. Is that you're lying, right? When we look at ourselves, we want to see a certain reflection back. Now, why we want to see it can vary. And that's what these two style characters are for me. House Gremlin Then we have our pretender, and then up next is our embodied biz baddie. So how do we get to embodied biz baddie is we really have to look at that pretender style character. And what is that pretender style character? I just said it's the person that uses their appearance to compensate for their lack of self-trust. This is the person that, and this I totally pulled out of this book. I can't remember the line because I didn't write it down, but it just stuck in my brain. She said, when we use our physical appearance as the consolation prize, of I didn't get everything done and everything's not as perfect as I wanted it to be, but I will dress up and that will make it perfect, right? I will look good and that will make it perfect. And I think that as a wounded society is where we got stuck in this idea of that fashion doesn't matter and that if you care about what you look like, you're shallow and you can't be smart and pretty and blah, blah, blah in any other story you could think of to hold you back, right? Just like you're working through those money stories, you work through these style stories, right? So that's the pretender. This is when you only get dressed for other people. And I have said this a thousand times, and I remind my clients of this every single time we're on the phone and this comes up, is you are not getting dressed for anyone but yourself. You get dressed for yourself first, and then you get dressed for other people. Does that mean that you don't think of other people? Of course, you're not not thinking of other people because the embodied biz baddie (laughs) <laughs> which is just my made-up word, like I said, my made-up style character. She's over here on this side of the spectrum, right? She's getting dressed for herself to reflect her outlook on life so she can communicate with you. And she knows you'll benefit from that. She knows that you're going to care about what she looks like. She knows that you're going to take it in. But first and foremost, she's thinking about what is she want to communicate What does she need you to know today about her so that you know how to interact with her, right? That's the difference between the pretender and the embodied woman, right? The pretender is dressing only for the other person. She's not dressing for herself because she doesn't trust herself enough. And I don't mean with dressing. I mean with whatever the situation is. But the embodied person, she's dressing for herself, knowing that you will benefit from that, knowing that she's telling a story with her outfit, knowing that she's leading with authority, that she's here to craft this experience for you. And that's not easy for a lot of people. I mean, it's not like it's necessarily easy for me. When I talk about a couple of weeks ago, I had this aha moment of, oh, I am the leader of this. I am the authority on this. And I'm allowed to be that way. I've been dressing that way for a while, but I don't think I've fully embodied that mentality. But by doing it physically for so long, it was part of that process that got me there. Now, we all, like I said, move in between that. And the house gremlin scenario was to just call light to the, if we find ourselves doing the I don't have time game, there's something deeper there that we need to reflect on. I've had multiple people tell me this. And it's something I think about a lot is the, they only do like the front of their hair or, you know, they'll pull their their hair back and they're only making sure the front of their hair is good, which is the same as like, you know, wear your pajama bottoms with your Zoom. I totally get it. But we all know that we still feel fully confident when we're leaning into that. So to me, that's like, we're right on the borderline of the martyr pretender and we're letting ourselves play in this super small energy. None of this takes a lot of time, right? This is just like letting ourselves step into this to become that embodied biz baddie. Sorry, I had to use the word baddie. My daughter uses it all the time, and I just think it's so cute. Um, she doesn't use it to talk about herself. <laughs> we're just talking about in Roblox and different characters and different things like that. It's just... To me, it's just the embodiment of the woman who just like fully trusts herself. And we can go through semantics here and all of that. But the point is, is that you are dressing for yourself, knowing that you get to benefit, knowing that they get to benefit. If you haven't listened to episode, I think it's 246, on how to use your color palette 
to tap into this. It's a really juicy episode because I talk a lot about how you can build trust and authority and approachability with your innate colors. That's the embodied woman. That's a woman that knows how to do that. All right. I hope you enjoyed this like breakdown of what 2024 can be, how we're going to lean into building sustainable style systems all month long. If you want to join me inside the style squad and build out your style mantras, build your winter capsules, I invite you to join us. This Thursday, we'll start kicking off our style squad calls for 2024. If you're on my email list, you got the email with all the details about what's coming up, what's coming up for the whole year. And don't forget, you can use the code SQUAD10 to get $10 off your first month. And stay tuned, because next week, we are going to do 2024 trends predictions. I did this piece with the Business Insider. I don't know exactly when it's going to drop. I don't know if it's going to drop before or after this episode. But I collaborated with them to do trend predictions for 2024. So I have 12 trend predictions for you. So I know it's going to be super fun to explore that next week on the podcast. All right. See you inside of the squad. I will see you later. Bye.